Okay, at this point in history, going back to 1904, if they told you to solve an equation, it was an X in it, it was automatically assumed that X was the variable. However, A could have also been the variable. All right, but the bottom line is the assumption here is you're solving for X, all right? How do you do that? It's quadratic. My strong recommendation to you is to write down X squared minus 2AX plus 6A minus 9 equals 0. And what I want to do now is I want to identify the A, B, and the C in the problem. The A is 1. The B is minus 2A. And the C is going to be 6A minus 9. And now i got to be careful. And by that, I'm going to write down the quadratic formula. What goes on bottom is twice dA, which is 2. What goes on top, the opposite of B, which would be 2A, plus or minus. And I always say for most students, this is where the nightmare uh, happens for them. They have a tough time with the radicand. So the B squared is 4A squared. And then you can get minus 4 times A is 1, times C, which is 6A minus 9. Okay, don't despair. That's not the answer. we got to simplify it. You get 2A plus or minus. And what do you get over here? The square root. And the bottom is 2. And what would that give you? That would give you 4A squared minus 24A plus 36. All right? So I want to keep going forward. And you're going to get x equals 2a plus or minus the square root. This is 2 in the bottom. And what do you get there? And this is, you know, it looks nice and perfect to me, actually. It looks like 2a, i got to be careful here, minus 6 squared. That works beautifully. All right. Now, by the way, I hate to go here, but I got to talk about it. And what happens to a lot of students is they just, and I, it, I, it happens to me as well. I just get tired and say, you know, whatever. So it happens. But 2a minus 6 squared would equal 2a minus 6 if and only if 2a minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. However, 2a minus 6 quantity squared would equal 6 minus 2a if 2a minus 6 were less than 0. All right? Now, Grant, there's something to say. Is that, does that matter that I knew that? I don't know. Let's take a look. All right? So I'm going to write down uh, cases now. I'm going to write down 2a minus 6 is greater than 0 or equal to it. So what do we have over here? We'd have x equals 2a plus or minus over 2. And let's be careful about this. It's going to be 2a minus 6 now. Okay. If I did that, there's two things I'd get. The 2a plus 2a would be 4a. Right? 2a plus 2a, 4a minus 6 over 2, which is going to be 2a minus 3. Let's do the other one. 2a minus 2a is 0, and minus minus 6 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm seeing these answers right here. 3, 2a minus 3. Right, let's do the other case. Let me get my eraser out. We're done with this. That worked out beautifully. And we're going to do the other case now. And let's put that one down. So, if the 2a uh, let's see what I said, minus 6 is less than 0. I got a different story now. But let's see what happens to the outcome of it. You would get x equals 2a plus or minus. It's the root that's so much trouble. And what's the root in that case going to be? It's going to be 6 minus 2a over 2. By the way, Wells does not press this point. 
it's a point worth making now. You're going to get x equals. Well, you can get 2a plus a minus 2a, right? That would disappear, and then you get 6 over 2. But lo and behold, you get 3 again. Let's do the other one. x equals, well, it's going to be 2a minus a minus 2a, which is 4a, and then you can get uh, minus 6 over 2. And what would that give you? 2a minus 3. Lo and behold, we get both uh, answers the same. Thank you.